What's up guys? I'm going to attempt to do a wire wrapping video um, on this piece of smoky quartz I have. It's a tumbled stone. Um, so there's not particularly a, a special stone or anything. I just, uh, I like the look of it. I like the way these stones look when they're wrapped. So I'm going to just give it a go and see. I have not filmed myself uh, doing work like this before, so it's going to be kind of a tricky little endeavor, but let's get into it and see what I can come up with. Um, it's, a, it's a thick stone, and uh, that adds to the trickiness of it. Also, tumble, tumbled stones in general, if you haven't wrapped anything in wire at all, they're tricky. Um, I would start with something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more forgiving, like a cabochon these guys for example I'm just gonna treat this like a 101 video I don't know uh, so this is a regular cabochon this is some kind of a Jasper or something and uh, it's rounded it's got the rounded face and the flat back these are so much easier to wrap than tumbled stones but I started out with tumbled stones just because that's what I had so uh, you know it can be done but I thought I would do that because that's what I'm working on today anyway and uh, we're gonna get right into it with the thickness of the stone being like it is, I'm going to go with a four wire setup. It just gives me more options to, to lock the stone in. Um, the more simple the, the stone and more cabochon like it is, it seems like you could use fewer wires. But uh, I'm going to go with more because it'll work for me. This is 20 gauge raw copper that I've got from uh, Rio Grande. Rio Grande. Rio Grande. <laughs> dot com. I'll put a, lo a link in the description. And uh, the wire we'll be using today will be just round and half round and maybe some 28 gauge. We'll see. So anyway, there's my four pieces. Um, your lengths will vary based on your stone. Um, these are all about 12 inches long. And I don't wrap enough of the exact same size stone enough to break it down to a science, so... That's just generally what I do, is get somewhere in the 10 or 12 inch um, range. And I've, I've yet to run out of wire on this type of wrap. You could try something more complicated and maybe have issues. But for this simple wrap, we'll be in good shape. So I'm going to take some half round raw copper. This is also 20 gauge, I believe. Um, and I love this stuff because it just it, it makes things go by more quickly. You can do... A fairly simple wrap without a lot of uh, without a lot of issues. Let's try a little bit different camera angle. That was not working well for me. This is uh, I've been doing a lot of wrapping and I make a, quite a few YouTube videos, but making a video of wrapping stones has been I've been kind of putting it off just because I've been dreading the camera work because it is hard to uh, film things that are kind of small. But we're gonna give it a good shot. So, like I said, I've got some 12, 12 inch long, 20 gauge raw copper. Then I've got about a 5 inch long piece of half round. And I'm going to use this to uh, just wrap the center of this wire. This is going to go straight under the middle of the, uh, the stone and support it. And everything's going to be kind of based around this. This is kind of the foundation of the, of the build. And like I said, I like to use half round for things that I don't want to spend a ton of time on because it just, it locks things in really well. And just, uh, it's very, very nice functionally. And uh, let's see if we can do this. I'm no expert. I've only been doing this for a couple of months. So you'll have to forgive some of this. Now, uh, also filming this is very tricky. So that definitely doesn't help. All right, so that's about six loops. I'll go with eight. And then on this, we'll move on from there. And I think that's about eight, eight loops with the half round in the center. And then I'll figure out which side's gonna be the inside, which will be against the stone, which will be this side flush cut wires then use my flat pliers to pinch these down 
flatten everything and pull it tight together. So, there we go. Now I need to figure out what part of the stone I'm going to have as the front. And I think it's going to be this side right here. It's relatively flat. It's going to stick out a lot in the back, but we can deal with that. I do have this little uh, gadget right here that is some double-sided tape on a piece of plastic. It's like phenolic or something. And this gives me something to hold the stone for moments like this. Um, actually before I do that I'm going to go ahead and put my side wires on. Now typically what I'll do is I'll lock the stone in. I'll have a wrap here of the half round and then the half round on the sides. This is a technique I learned from Kelly Jones. If you haven't seen her wire wrapping videos, check them out. She's amazing. And uh, I use her tutorials when I'm feeling like challenging myself. <laughs> So, definitely check her out. Now for the side wraps, I'm going to do about maybe five wraps because I don't need quite as much on the sides. And I just like the, the different numbers of wraps. It may not be for everyone. You can do whatever you like. You could wrap uh, twice as much as I am, but whatever works for you. Okay. And I'm trying to keep everything straight, flat, and lined up. There's quite a bit of fiddling around. And that works. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, if you... There's, there's several chances to uh, correct things along the way, so... Even if you are fighting it, you'll still have more opportunities to get everything how you want it. And honestly, uh, even if you don't get it very flat at all, when we start locking in the stone, you're going to be moving these wires around anyway, so it's not like they're going to stay flat. At least not the way I'm doing it. You could do it that way, but that's not what we're going to do. Okay. So there's four. Try to keep everything bunched together and tight. And there's five. Pull it to the inside. I trim it at about the halfway mark and push it flat down. And then squeeze everything good and tight with my pliers. Okay. So and these slide around for now. So that's that's what you want. You want to be able to place things where you want them. So that's fine. Um, we're going to start by trying to get this to right where we want the bottom center to be. And as you can see, I was a little bit off on my placement on these, so I can move them around. And since the, this stone is irregularly shaped, you're going to probably have to deal with placing things. So anyway, I've got the side held on here. I'm going to go around. Looks like I'm going to have to slide this half round up a little bit. You also want to keep one side of the wires over the top of the other side in a bunch rather than mixing them all together and uh, this is kind of like what we're going to be going for you can see that so my half round settled up here my center I can kind of move that around too a little bit but what you want is a bottom center main um, wrap and then one on the sides because we're going to pull in the wires in these corners to uh, lock the stone in Okay, so we got everything placed kind of where we want it. Now we're going to try to f get right at the top center of where things meet, and we're going to bend the wire away from the middle. And so, we'll do it on that side, do it on this side. And where these t two sides meet is where we're going to wrap more half-round wire right there. 
and I still struggle with this part. Um, I just I haven't got the best technique in the world to figure out how to make this nice and tight and perfect, but I have found that using a little strip of duct tape like this does help keep things kind of in check. I've uh, also used different things to kind of hold these wires together up here, like bread ties and different things, but uh, nothing has been an amazing solution so far, so we're going to stay on the struggle bus and uh, do it this way. So you just want these ends to be away. And I, a few times I've wrapped these and if I don't like how they end up, I'll just uh, I'll lock the stone in and I'll rewrap it at the end. I'll just do it again because this is a, a particular spot where you can do that. So just pull those tails tight. Try to keep things nice and tight and even. Hopefully you can see this. Like I said, this is my first video doing this. Been putting it off. Been dreading how I would even film it while I'm working on it because I usually just have it right in my face under my magnifying light. And uh, I think that's going to work. Um, yeah, that's going to work nice. So I'll go ahead and you could leave these tails loose and maybe use them for something later on in the project. But for this one, I'm not going to do... I'm going to keep it pretty simple since this is my first wrap video. I want to make it uh, pretty simple. So we're going to just loop the half round through the middle a few times right here to lock it in. And that should work pretty good. I think I'll maybe I'll do three. Probably should have waited till the coffee wore off to do this video, but here we are. And we'll push things in a little bit flat. And try to snip this to where it's hiding inside reasonably well. So there we are. One tail is tucked in on the side. And uh, I'm going to leave this other tail hanging for the moment. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and lock in the stone. And one way I've found to do that is to go ahead and pull each side down a little bit. Sometimes I'll do this a single wire at a time if I'm worried about them being piled up on each other. But I find that when we're locking in the stone, these need to be pulled down or the wires will pull down too much while I'm uh, adjusting things. So I'm going to loosen the tape, make sure that my sides are free below the side wrap so I'm not accidentally holding them down. And we're going to go ahead and, and try to pull these wires out in such a way that we can lock in the stone. Now this is sticking out so far, I'm probably going to have to get creative, but uh, we'll see. And I'm just going to use my finger now. You could use pliers or whatever to do this but uh, by habit I just grab it with my nails so got the first wire pulled back and we want to start in the bottom and work our way up because if you start at the top you're gonna be the wire is not going to give as much because you've already kind of put a kink in it so there's another part pulled out a little bit and uh, I guess I'll do a little bit of the front. I usually like to do the back and then go to the front, but this stone is pretty strange, so just pull that forward. Get this guy, pull him forward a little bit. And you just need a little bit pulled forward to keep the stone from moving. It doesn't take a ton of wire to hold it there. And if you're worried about the residue from the tape and stuff, don't worry about it. It it all washes off in the end. The last thing I usually do is wash the pendant, so that residue doesn't last. Okay, so with the shape of this stone, I typically would like to pull in the top right here, but uh, it's such an odd shape that I'm struggling to uh, pull that off. So what that means is that the stone's probably just going to be kind of moving on me while I work on it further. So I'm going to go ahead and just move on, and uh, we'll lock it in in another way. That's not This isn't ideal, but 
we'll work with it. And I uh, use my nylon jawed pliers to straighten the wires out when they get kinks on them like this. And just approach them from different angles. Sometimes you have to give it just a little bit of a twist to get the kinks out. That works. Pull this other wire. These are the furthest two wires to the back. And these are going to make my bale. Um, so we'll take that half round tail that we have here from earlier and we'll just go ahead and wrap these two guys together. Some people like a nice big fancy bale that's flared out and I do too sometimes but we're trying to keep it simple so we're gonna do this this way. And uh, I like to keep the wires fairly close together and try to keep them next to each other. But it's, it's a challenge. You just kind of have to squeeze them flat. But at this point, they're so close to the bundle right here that it's hard to keep them flat. All right. So I've coiled that around a few times. I'm going to try to bend this wire underneath. You hide it. All right. Now I'm going to have to find a different method of locking in the stone because of the weird shape of it. But that's where all these other wires can come in and be helpful. I'm going to do a quick, uh, let's see, I'm going to keep this simple, so. I have these little uh, tools, I have to look up the name of them. It's like a jump ring sizer or something like that. But I like to use it to figure out the bend of my bale. And I can also, uh, I can choose the curve and I can push against it to form the bale. Usually the back of the stone is more flat, so I can kind of push it up against the stone. But this one is not, so we're going to be a little bit more creative. Now this is a weird stone shape, so we're going to have to do some magic here. Um, I'm going to do some curls that will kind of give me different points to lock up the back of this. And uh, because we can't hold it with a frame like I, I typically do. So, so we're going to use some 28 gauge copper for this next step. I like to use a lot of different wire gauges for different things because I have it. So if you're just get starting out, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, you can just kind of make do with what you have. That's what I did. Um, but I very quickly just got more and more into this. So I just bought a lot of wire, but I've been kind of doing it in batches. Um, let's see. So we're gonna curl it over here. I think would be a a good start. I maybe want to anchor it to where this is sticking out. Right here below the, the coil, I've got some space I could squeeze in a wire, so I'm going to kind of just go with that. And uh, you want to hold the wire as you curl it kind of where you want it to be mostly anchored at. And I'm going to just give it some interesting twisting. So this gives me a point to anchor right here, and then I'm going to have another point to anchor down here. And I'll probably pull that in tighter and trim it. But mainly we're going to start right there just to get the stone still. And when I do weaving like this, when I'm just doing little joints to connect things, I usually grab about a 5 inch piece of wire and go with it. Um, this is usually where I use my magnifying glass and get into things. So this is going to be interesting. <laughs> to not use it. Also I have this little uh, just a push pin that I put a piece of putty on the end of it but any kind of pin will slide in there and give you a gap for your wires to get in. Without that pin your wire is not gonna it can't kinda make its own channel because it's so soft it just curls up and bends and distorts. I'm gonna try to use my light maybe 
when I'm using a 28 gauge to wrap like this, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm just looping it around this joint right here. I give it a good curl as I feed it so it'll want to go up as it goes through. And I'll do about three or four wraps around the main joint and then around the sides. So you can see that that's about three wraps. Get my pliers, pull it tight without distorting everything. And do it again. There we go. So that that is joined, and that's nice. Um, now I'm just going to anchor this back to the whatever the wire what whatever wire is the stronger of the two I kind of bounce back and forth but typically I'll, I'll uh, put these little anchors on the frame because I think most of the strength is in the frame so I'm gonna go around three times give it some pulls along the way keep it tight And then I think about where I want to have my wire tail hanging where I can trim and tuck it while I'm doing this. And I think I'll have mine on that side. In case I didn't show you. So I got three wraps right here on the side. And I'll do a three on the other side. There's one. can't see as well without my magnifying light. Definitely recommend one if you don't have one. Just an overhead lamp with a magnifying glass in the center. Lots of people have them. And there we have it. Now I like to overlay the wire to the side that it's going to be trimmed on so I can just push it down. After I trim it, I leave about a sixteenth of an inch, and then I push it down. So there's a little tail right there. I don't know if you can even see it, but you just tuck it in like that. Tuck that one in like that. If you do it right, it's like there's no tail at all. So we're going to go ahead and find a spot to do it down here as well. I do most of my bending with my fingers, but once in a while you just won't have enough wire to do that, so the pliers can, can get the job done. And this is where the flush cut pliers work out nicely because they give you a nice flat tip on your tails. Do another weave, six inches of 28 gauge again. And just like the first time, we're going to wrap these two main wires together, and then we'll uh, fan it out on the sides a little bit. And this one's going to be a little bit tricky. And keep in mind, I've never uh, worked quite like this, so it's going to take some getting used to. I also don't do very many long form videos because uh, I don't personally watch a bunch of them. So listening to people work and yammer on can be, just doesn't, it's not something I watch myself. So it's hard to, it's hard to make a video in a way that you don't like to watch videos, if you know, if that makes any sense at all. Okay, so I'm holding those two closely together right here. And I'm just going to wrap it three times. Um, when you have an open hook, it kind of makes it nice. 
because you can just kind of pull the wire straight through and then up through the hook opening. And when I'm we weaving these wires together, it's important that they that they settle right next to each other, right there. You don't want them to overlap, or you're going to have this big bundle that uh, doesn't look nice, and it's uh, not as secure, I think. So there's the three center wires. Now I'm going to get the three wraps on the sides. Maybe four. That first one went really deep when I pulled it tight, so. There's two. Sometimes I'll, I'll pull these tight with pliers on every turn. But for the sake of not taking all day long, I'm gonna try to do it with my fingers. There, there you have it. Pull those a little tighter. So there's that. And the stone can still move a little bit, so you have to be kind of careful. You don't want them to blast out and hit the floor. So. So, there we have it. Got that hook anchored in, three in the middle, three on each side. Three in the middle, three on each side. And that side should be nice and strong now. So go ahead and cut these tails. I like to leave a little bit hanging off, but not much. Probably, you want it to hang off about the same thickness as your wire so it can rest flush if I can get that show. it'll rest flush against the wire when you squeeze it in you might have to chase it around the side of the wire a little bit in a circular motion to get it to go flat now this one's over a crack so I'll have to just kinda push it in a little and then force those pliers in there to get it finished up there we go so anyway there's one side now we'll look at the other side and it's probably going to be something similar I'm gonna anchor in to right here and then do some sort of a some sort of a loop towards the base so I'm gonna bend this along the curve of the stone and that's laying in really nicely then I like to kind of make the twists and loops contrast each other a little bit so that's generally the idea right there so I have a big loop up here little loop down here I'll have it anchored in two spots and that stone shouldn't go anywhere so get some more 28 gauge most craft stores have 20 gauge copper, 28 gauge copper. They'll have plated wires too. This is this is all raw copper. Except the plated wires are kind of known for not holding their color very well. Even though it's fun to use the colored wire, it just doesn't wear very well. And uh, anyway, so that was tight. This frame is tight on this side, so I'm lifting it up a little bit with the push pin. And sometimes I have to put that back on every every time I push the wire through but usually after the first go through it creates enough gap having that wire in there that I can make it work and you just have to stay close to the, the single wire because it's lifting the wire up enough to where you have just enough space to get in there And I've kinked the tip of my wire, so it's a little weird. Sometimes I'll kink those and I'll just cut them off. So I have a nice straight wire to go in.
but it's working out right now, so. Okay. So there we go. We have anchored that guy. Three reps right there. You know the drill, three on each side. There's three, and then lay it where I want it. One wrap there. Another wrap next to it. give it one more for good measure. Pull it tight with my pliers and lay it down. Now some people will keep their every little bundle of wires tight and seamless. Um, I generally try to do that onto some level, but it don't, I don't make it, it, it doesn't bother me so I don't I don't think too much about it. I kind of like the contrast of open gaps and just makes it look a little bit different and unique, I think. You might think it looks absolutely like garbage, but that's okay too. Just cut that tail off, push that wire tip into the curl and against the stone. Another six inch, 28 gauge. We're going to anchor that curl in. I like to get to about the halfway point in the wire. If I haven't already discussed this after doing it three times, it's kind of late in the game, but here we are. When I watch YouTube tutorials, um, which I like to do, I keep a notebook handy and I just make notes and steps. And that has really worked well for me. It's also the way I make videos, I typically. I'm basically thinking about them in steps, and I'm making notes along the way, and pretty much the way my videos play out, especially my really edited ones with lots of text, those are pretty much exactly how my notes look. So anyway, that curl is now anchored. Can you see it? And then we'll do the three on each side, like we've done three times before. One, two, three. Now, on this side of the frame, the wire is pretty tight against the stone, so I'm going to lift it back up. I almost just secured it against the bail wire, but I didn't. There's one. Now since it's so tight, we're going to have to get real close. There we go. There's two. Get close again. There's three. Cut our ends. I usually use my nail to tap, push the end of the wire over to give it a head start. But it's kind of rough on the nails. Probably be a better habit to use your pliers. Plus your nail length varies, so it's really not a very dependable tool. <laughs> Unless you just keep your nails nice and long and whatever. That could work. Okay, so 
this almost looks like an alien head or something but when when it's being worn it's just going to look the front of it's going to be mostly what draws your eyes and i think it's going to look really nice so now we have all these possibilities ahead of us um i'm trying to keep keep it simple which means not a lot of joining wires together it means a lot of you know decorative twisting of single wires to get a fun effect so that's what we're going to do we're going to start by just giving this a little accent up here we're going to get rid of two of these wires really easily and quickly by just giving them a nice little bend fun little curl push it flat against the bale flush cut it and then just kind of bend it in towards the bale and we'll do the same on this side just kind of give it a kind of a classic look and I'm going to do it a little bit asymmetrical flush cut it push it in kind of gives it a fun look you can also tuck them behind you can pull them even tighter or you can just do more with them in general um, I think I'm going to keep this really simple and just do two decorative wires which means I'm going to go ahead and hide another pair this one I might kind of pull to the back so we're going to sneak it through the back of the bale and this is good practice because it's kind of tricky to shape the wires that come through the opening of the bale so give it a shot see how it goes for you and it gives more depth to those wires that are being cut short and hidden by giving you more of them to work with it just looks like there's more going on I'm gonna have to sneak in here pretty angled that just gives it a little bit more of a complex look and I'm gonna go ahead and hide this guy as well actually I'm gonna wrap this around I think I'm gonna wrap this around ah. nah I think we're good okay so that one's about lined up with the other side push them up against the bale nice and close gives it kind of a fun look now we could deal with these wires and I'm trying to think about possible weaknesses in the frame to where the stone might go and uh, it's a pretty big opening up here we might have to do something right here to close these guys in but we'll go ahead and we'll worry about that in a minute this is a unique stone I've never w worked with one that was quite so strange it's a uh, really sticks out really far in the back it's kinda like wrapping a little skull or something but uh, anyway let's get on with it now this is all kind of whatever you like as far as the curls go they are functional because they give you more places to cure, secure the stone which is always a good thing so I'm gonna aim for a curl to be right there that's gonna give some really nice strength to the sides of the Front of the frame. Then I'm going to give it another curl right here, go in the opposite direction. Now I push the wire against the stone as I curl it, so it's sitting where I want it to go. And uh, we're going to go ahead and I don't usually do more than two curls, but I'm going to give it a third curl. This might mean that I do something different with the other side. So. And that's about all I can manage out of that wire. It was nice and long. This is this is what happens when you have 12 inches of wire to start with. You have plenty, plenty to do things with. And that was all I cut off, <laughs> like a quarter of an inch. So anyway, we're gonna go back into looping that 28 gauge around and securing it. 
and then we might do might do something creative with this to uh, get some additional strength right in this spot here because that's just a really large gap. So I'm probably going to pull these together tighter and then send this other wire across the top. We'll figure it out. I'm going to do this part off off camera just so you don't have to watch. But all I'm going to do is secure this to the frame, this loop to the frame, and then the other one. Um, I may just do it on camera. This is what this is all about anyway. And I'll start with the, the curl that's closest to the top because that is, uh, I want the wire to lay flat and be strong so that's that's the way I've worked out that it works best. It's kind of like tightening from one end and guiding it to the other. Otherwise the wire might be kind of raised in certain spots where you wouldn't want it to be. So there's about halfway, pulling it close to the frame as I can, and whatever the rest of the gap is, I'll just pull out of it when I secure the wire in. Okay, this is going to be a little tricky. I'll just keep doing my pin. The wire's curling away from me. So, there we go. up my wire so alright there's two one on the side so you can kind of see where I'm at. So I've got it secured with three loops here and I'm moving over to the side and I've got the wires kind of doubled over each other but that'll work. And uh, sometimes I'll even kind of taper them off. If I have two wires next to each other and I just can't quite fit through them then I'll just treat them as a pair. But this forks a little bit so I'm probably going to do a three over the, the center, three over this pair that touches, and then extend it over to one of these single wires just a little bit. And that's probably overkill, which is fine. And keep in mind, I've only been doing this uh, for a couple months. I don't know how many stones I've managed to wrap in that amount of time. I doubt I've even done a hundred yet. So I have lots of areas to improve. If you're somebody that does this a lot and you see some holes in my my game here, feel free to comment and let me know. So alright, now we're gonna go up to the top side. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough room to do the same thing on this side, but we'll try. There's one loop. I think I can make it work, yeah, there, maybe. Maybe not. Get under there. Alright, well, I'm not going to fight that too much. I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to end up just finishing this one inside this curl here. We've got so much wire on the bottom side, it doesn't matter anyway. As far as giving this thing some strength. If anything, it's probably overkill. But I don't want to make a design where the rock's going to come out under any normal circumstances. 
and you can tell I mean after you're done with your wrap if you get your fingers around the stone and give it some some movement if it moves you need to consider reinforcements so. All right. so anyway made that kind of make do so instead of bringing it over here these side wires it's just too tight with this coil being right here I just wrapped it around the loop a little bit and that'll work just fine I think okay so that's one loop now we'll move down We're just moving to the next loop down. There's three. This is number two. And this one's a lot more open. There's not a bunch of closed bundles of wire next to it, so it's going to be a little bit easier to do. And with round wire, you kind of have to you have to push it down and kind of force it to go where you want, because it'll just bunch up and go wherever. Round wire can look really nice, but it can be a huge pain to work with. And I'm getting out of practice a little bit just doing like weaves with round wire. It just is so finicky. And in the same amount of time, I can have a half round do the job. And it's, it's kind of hard to go back and forth. I've just been sticking to the half round. There can't, may come a point where that's, I just have to figure it out, but for speed and simplicity, the half round is super awesome. Alright, now we're doing the other side. I've been getting some pretty good grips on this and keeping it pretty tight, so I haven't used the pliers too much, but this thing's a little bit short now, so. It's amazing how much faster this one's going. Alright. That's three. Three loops, once again in the middle and on the sides. Snip it. And tuck it. Lift that tail a little bit long. I'm going to reach in there and take some more off if I can. Yep, got it. It's, it's hard to consistently nail the length. It, it seems to be just a, a bit of a finicky thing to do. Okay, now, that's looking nice. We've got this stone, this hoop right here reaching across. I think that's going to turn out nice. And then I've got to really think about securing this corner and then how, what I'm going to do with the back here. Um, we'll figure it out though. Yet another 6 inches of 28 gauge wire. Okay, where am I? Here we are. And that frame is nice and tight to the stone. So, get our needle in there. <laughs> I mean, when I put this is just some uh, epoxy it's uh, like a JB weld tube of uh, like plastic epoxy or something I really thought I was onto something when I put the balls on there and then I thought oh wait pretty sure there's just standard needles with balls on the end of them so yeah probably a waste of, of uh, epoxy but here we are I thought I had invented something and yet, yet again it was just a common product that happens to me Pretty often. So anyway, what we're pulling this tight, getting that in there. Yeah, we'll secure it to the frame outside of the curl. There's the, my three loops right there. 
And, you know, if you're having issues, I think most of the problems that, that come up in wire weaving can be solved by just taking your time. Um, most of the time, if something goes sideways for me, it's because I just was rushing through certain steps, not paying attention to what I was doing, and just kind of early issues can kind of compound, and then at the end you're just like, hey, wait, this thing's just not quite what I want it to be. And if I had taken my time and just looked things over more closely along the way, most of that could be eliminated. Alright. Cut those, push the ends, tuck them. And there we are. It's looking good by my standards. Okay, so we're going to do the layout of the very last wire. And I'm just trying to think of all the possible failure points of this piece. And the one I see the biggest is this guy right here. I want to have something on top of that. So we're going to take this bale wire, we're going to loop it across that little bump right there, and then do something to secure it to the back. We'll see how it looks as, a, as we go along with it. Never had to do one quite like this, so we're going to just kind of see how it how it goes. So anyway, we've wrapped it across the front, I'm going to hold it right there on that center with that little, kind of like a horn almost, and well, I don't think I'm going to be able to go back in the back with it and like the way it looks, so we're just going to end it right here. And just for some contrast, I'm going to make it a pretty tight curl so it doesn't look like the ones in the bottom. And then snip it. So, Let's see if I can get that in focus at all. There we go. Not too shabby. You know, it's a it's a compromise when it comes to. Uh, wrapping tumbled stones because uh, you're having to deal with the, the shape of the stone and that can't be fully controlled so and I'm doing my I'm breaking my rule I'm gonna do the curl first on this one and then I'm gonna find a place to wrap it up here because there's just so much movement right there it's just gonna be a challenge so Let's see if I can get this through here there we go down and get this one wrapped up. One. Okay, can't quite get this tip to go where I want it, so I'm going to pull it with the pliers. And like I said, you're always fighting the round wire's desire to stack on itself. And sometimes you just got to go with it, so that's what we're going to do. Now, uh, I like to, I have been trying to sell my pieces, pieces like this. You know, it's a tumbled stone, it's not a precious, you know, carefully faceted and wonderful and rare stone, so I, these are fairly inexpensive. So time is kind of of the essence of on these if you don't want to make anything on them, so speed is just fine, because it's, you're not doing a $5,000 fine piece of art. You're just doing, you know, maybe a stone that somebody 
just really likes from their personal collection. Something they collected and it means something to them, so it's more more about the cool stone than it is about the, you know per the perfect jewelry piece. There it is, secured in the middle and on each side. And that feels pretty good right where it is. But we're going to do a little extra just for peace of mind. I think I can get by with 28 gauge. <laughs> and that'll probably work. <laughs> so we'll go with that. In some situations you might be able to get away with a different type of wire. Maybe if I could squeeze some half round in there, it, it would work nicely, but I just don't think I have enough room to get in there and do that. So we're gonna do this one. So what I'm going to do is just go around where these two wires cross and brace them against each other. And that's further anchored on the frame, so this should add a lot of strength without, you know, taking away anything visually. And I'm just kind of creeping up the bail with the extra wire. So they're connected right here. And then I'm just finishing it by going up this bail wire on the side here. And sometimes I like to let the coil get a little spread out just for the different look of it. I think it looks kind of fun. It gives it a unraveled ribbon type of effect. So, I kind of like the way that looks. I know for a fact not everyone does. But, I'm just doing my own thing. Pull that kind of tight. Not a huge fan of the, of having to do it this way, but it'll work. And I think the only people that are going to really pay much attention to this particular spot or you and me because we're the ones making the thing and at a glance it's not going to draw any attention to itself and it's going to add strength to hold this stone in and everybody's going to notice if the stone falls out so we don't want that to happen okay so there it is it's kind of a kind of bunched up on itself because it's round wire and that's a weird joint but part of that is just dealing with a weird stone I am looking at this little gap and you could probably secure that but it feels really strong at this point point. and uh, I don't think there's much else to be done I might try bending this a little bit to the stone just to do it I think that works a lot better too. And you can kind of reach in there and move the stone around independent of the frame and you can get a feel for, for how strong it is. Um, I think that works pretty well. What I might do, well, I think it over, but yeah, I 
here it is. Think it over and see if there's anything else to be done. Okay, so I've looked at the stone a little bit more to kind of think about what I'll, I should do to it just for security. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind these two bail wires together a little bit more with some half round. And uh, this will just give me a little bit more peace of mind about the strength of these bail wires. I'm also going to add a couple of pieces, I think, to the back, but we'll, we'll get into that in a second. This is something I do on really odd shaped pieces if I'm kind of concerned about things escaping. So anyway, all I'm doing is continuing the half round wire that ended at the, the top of the bale. And this will blend reasonably well with what I've already done. And this is giving these two wires back here on the bale some strength. One thing that's always underestimated with crafts is just how people move things. Um, with blacksmithing, I've always watched how people move the hammer and some, somehow kind of understand how material moves on a subconscious level. And wire wrapping is no different. Um, you can tell when somebody's been doing this for years and years, just the way they can make the material move kind of effortlessly. They take that for granted. And as a new person trying to do that, you kind of expect to feel this or see the material move the way that a really experienced person can make it move, and it just doesn't happen that way. So if you watch somebody like Oksana or Kelly Jones, who've been doing this st stuff for years, they just make it look like it's completely effortless, but it's just the strength and the familiarity they have. With the, with the wire itself. I do not have that. I've gotten better, but I don't have that effortless level of, of making the wire do exactly what I want quite yet. So you'll see me struggle. You may see me moving things in a way that maybe other people don't do it, but it's just, it just comes with time. All right, that one I'm gonna cut and tuck. We've got a bit of a bump up there, but I'm okay with that. So, anyway, and this is going to give a ton of strength to these two wires. I can tell already. So they just kind of were kind of move, moving a little bit before, and now they're not. So. Yeah, we'll call that good. And, um, you know, it doesn't feel super necessary, but just as an added bonus, I think I'm going to add a couple of wires in here, too, just to tighten things up a little bit more. You could stop here, but I'm going to go ahead and just try to maybe think of a way to add something here to really bind these together, because it's a bit of an opening. I feel like if I pull these apart, the stone could pop out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add a 20 gauge round piece right here with a couple of curls, maybe like an S curl or S hook, and put that in right there because I don't think it's gonna come out the top. I don't think that's possible, especially with the way it comes out the front. So I'm gonna do this just as an overkill thing. Maybe this is uh, too much and you don't need it, but here we are. Another piece of 20 gauge round. And I like to make my curls a little bit asymmetrical. So 
I'll usually do one curl towards the small end of the plier and the other curl towards the bigger end. So I'm trying to think of what I need here. I may do something like this. So the wire can hook in right there, come over here, hook the other side. That'll give it some really serious strength. And then come back over here. And these are really, these should be fairly easy spots to get into. So this doesn't add a lot of time, but it'll add a lot of strength. So that's what we're going to do. So it's kind of a U-bend. So I'm adding this little U-shape. It's going to secure it on there. And then I don't have to worry about this thing ever popping out the bottom. And once again, if this were a standard cabochon, this video would have been a fraction of the length of this one. So I've already kind of proved my point about uh, tumbled stones versus cabs. Cabs look nicer. They uh, usually are more valuable type of remorse out sought after. So, you know, tumbled stones are not for everyone, including the people that make these things. <laughs> but you know what? In the end, of, at the end of the day, I'm gonna have a really cool looking piece. I think so. So be it. Alright. wire seems to be getting tighter than it should be. So we're secured on one side, we'll secure over here, and then move the other hook over. Weird things start to happen once you start securing wires, they start to move a little bit weirdly. So I'm going to secure the U side over here.
bit of a struggle there. And I'm trying to keep the wires next to each other. And I'll do my best with it, but it's a struggle sometimes. that secured and this one kind of thinking about how I do this I think I can make that work I'm gonna just secure it to that frame wire there This one's pretty tight, so I'm going to probably end up leaving the needle in it for most of the wrapping. Unless it shoots out on its own, just like that. getting really close to that other loop so I need to push it up and get it away. There we go. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. little tip for you if your hands start to get to a point where they every time you pull a wire it's sliding your fingers could be getting tired but um, sometimes it's just the oil on your hands if you use a little bit of hand sanitizer it'll rip that oil off and you'll get some grip back I'm sure that's probably not great for your skin but here we are Okay, so 
trying to figure out what to do with this tail. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Just getting right in there. Just having a little bit of a battle. Yeah, be careful when you flush cut next to other wires because you might take out more than you want to. I've taken some bites out of things that I really wish I hadn't have. Okay, so we've added to the back. And that stone feels very strong in there. So, I think we're going to roll with it. So, this isn't quite what I had in mind when I started. I thought it would be a little bit more straightforward. But when it comes to tumbled stones, you just never know what you're going to get into. And this is a prime example of that. Um, it just adds a lot of complexity that you just don't have when you... Uh, work with a regular cab so I would recommend start out with some cabs do something simple they're not that expensive um, honestly they're just a little bit more than a tumbled stone just to, if you compared like this to a cab you could probably get a cab of smoky quartz for a little bit more than well maybe a, a, you know it's still just reasonable but anyway um, I think we'll call that good and I hope this uh, was helpful and if you have any questions or suggestions or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Here's a little bonus footage for you guys. I've got some liver of sulfur in water, which will oxidize copper. And I'm going to drop the pendant down in here. And this will turn the copper black. And after it does so, I will drop it in some baking soda and water to neutralize the liver of sulfur, and then I'll rinse it off with soap and water and polish it a little bit with steel wool, and it'll add a little bit of depth to it. Just kind of adds some interest to the way it looks. I almost always prefer the way the oxidized copper looks as opposed to the raw copper, so sometimes I'll think, yeah, let's leave it shiny, but then I never regret going through this process. And it's pretty black. My, uh, my solution's probably getting a little bit weak. It's starting to get a little bit more clear. It should be pretty dark, but the batch lasts about a week, and I think I'm about at the limit, so yeah, we'll neutralize it in the baking soda water and it comes out pretty well black and I'll take some 4-0 steel wool and give it a quick brush over and it'll bring out some highlights I just wanted to give you a show I'll, uh, I'll do that and I'll bring it back So I've typically been doing this part with uh, with soap and water on the steel wool, but it, the steel wool just doesn't last very long that way. So lately I've been doing this right after the baking so, um, after the baking solution. So lately I've been doing this after dunking it in the baking soda water, and then just giving it a polish while it's dry or drying. And this keeps me from having to. Uh, Submerge the steel wool, and after you know a couple uses, it falls apart. But this way, it keeps the steel wool dry, and it seems to last longer.
Not that it's expensive or anything, it's just kind of, I feel like I should get more life out of it than I have been. If I can buy steel wool once every five years, as opposed to once every six months, that's fine with me. And yeah, I'll just give a quick brush to any part you can reach. And the parts you can't reach probably were meant to be black anyway, so works out good. That just gives it some interest. And I will clean it off with soap and water, give it a rinse, air dry, and then bring it back. All right, here's the finished product after it's been uh, oxidized and polished. And I hope you guys found this useful and interesting. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. And uh, we'll start thinking about the project for next time. Thanks for watching.